By the slopes of Japan's sacred mountain lies the rural retreat of a sect known as the Orm Supreme Truth. It's here, in this picture postcard setting, that a 20th century nightmare became reality. Three months ago, Tsarin nerve gas was released on the Tokyo subway during the morning rush hour. Choking and blinding five and a half thousand people, killing 11. The attack, we now know, was part of a much larger plot aimed no less at overthrowing the Japanese state and starting a world war. These are the people being held responsible. Six years ago, a near-blind acupuncturist, Shoko Asahara, founded the Om Shinrikyo, or Supreme Truth. The religion is a blend of yoga and mysticism, with bits of Buddhist, Hindu and Christian teachings thrown in. His catchiest sales point, though, was a claim to levitation. Recruiting at Japan's top universities, the Orm proved attractive to those disillusioned with an academic system which measures people by exam scores rather than individual ability. With the coming of peace, a new constitution gave Japanese the freedom at last to choose their own religion. They call this period the rush hour of the gods. A religious corporation's law bestowed generous tax concessions and other privileges which politicians found they could trade for votes. When the Om Shinrikyo gained official recognition, it took shelter beneath a well-established and corrupt system of patronage. In 1990, Asahara and 24 of his followers ran for parliament. Their all-dancing, all-singing campaign became a familiar sight in Tokyo streets, although it left most voters cold. They set up in a quiet dairy farming community. The Orm now boasted 10,000 followers throughout Japan and nearly a thousand settled here at Kamikuishiki. Inside, sect members were undergoing survival training. Chemicals and drugs were used to raise, then remove states of anxiety. Other techniques of mind control included hours of chanting and listening to tapes like this. Followers paid thousands of dollars to be blessed by Asahara, to drink his blood or tea brewed from his hair, and to wear the Orm's trademark headgear fitted with electrodes supposed to transmit the guru's brainwaves. 
沈没するんだと核戦争になる可能性が高いんだと言われたらですね自動的に出家生活に移行しちゃうわけですよ。So、how did this all members family react? いや周りの人が全部止めてくれたんですよ。もう思い込んでましたからノア,にノアの箱舟に乗るようなつもりでいましたから。Deprived of sleep and food, and led through ordeals such as immersion in hot baths, some followers died. Their remains were secretly cremated, along with an unknown number of others who were murdered, either for challenging the sect or trying to leave. <coughs> the loyal ones, on the other hand, were showered with praise. This OM video shows members emerging after six days living underground, the shock troops of the coming conflict. The man in the picture was a rocket scientist before joining the cult. He'll later head the OM's foreign office. One of an elite group of doctors, biologists, and chemists, with a sprinkling of ex gangsters, who made up the OM's cabinet. Asahara's next critical move was in 1992, seen here arriving in Moscow to open a branch of the sect. In the post Cold War confusion, many Russians too were looking for spiritual nourishment. As many as 30,000 joined, or three times the cult's Japanese membership. Through charitable donations and its alleged hefty bribes, Asahara made contacts high in the Russian government. All members reportedly gained permission to train with a Russian paratroop regiment. Certainly, they were able to buy sessions like this, filmed near Vladivostok, playing with the deadly toys of a cash strapped military. From Russia, the ORM smuggled home AK 47s to be used as models for their own weapons manufacture. This helicopter, bought second hand for a million dollars, was another Russian souvenir. Also, around this time, the ORM was gaining members within Japan's own defense forces. Soldiers helped steal industrial secrets for research on laser, biological, and nuclear weapons, and formed a commando unit with the idea of assassinating the emperor. And staging a coup d'etat. The coup is a coup d'etat. The coup d'etat 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 is a coup d'etat. Some of the work going on here, right in the middle of downtown Tokyo. Over a period of months, residents collected a thousand photographs documenting these plainly non religious activities, all of which went unchallenged by the authorities. <laughs> Awoken at night by a stench of noxious fumes, Protesting residents managed to flush out the guru in his Mercedes. But a fortnight would pass before city inspectors followed up their complaints. By then, the evidence had been removed, and the ORM were looking for a quieter place to work. They chose this remote sheep station, which the sect bought near Leonora in Western Australia. Asahara came here in September 1993. But here also, their activities didn't go unnoticed. Two members were fined by Australian Customs for illegal transportation of chemicals. What Customs missed, hidden inside 30 sake bottles, was a prototype of sarin nerve gas, which the ORM proceeded to test on sheep at the property. By the middle of last year, the Sarin project was well advanced, with a huge arsenal of chemicals bought through dummy companies stockpiled at Kamikuishki. On the building permit, this was described as an office block. In fact, it became the centerpiece of the cult's doomsday adventure. 
The sarin factory was the brainchild of a 30-year-old chemist, Masami Tsuchiya. This interview was taped before his arrest. He's asked his opinion of Shoko Asahara. It had cost $50 million to develop, but sarin was now ready to be used on people. Here in the city of Matsumoto, The target was this apartment block, the residence of three judges who were hearing a land claim against the Orm. This simulation shows how nerve gas, released that night from a car park, enveloped the neighbourhood, killing seven people and putting hundreds in hospital. It came through the garden of Yoshiyuki Kono, who raised the alarm. Kono-san's wife has been crippled for life. The police remained paralyzed, but by now many ordinary citizens were in open conflict with the cult. Here, an old member who kidnapped her father in order to have him sign over the family estate tries to stop him blowing the whistle on the sect. Others, including former members, also began to go public, describing the Orm's methods of extortion. With her brother's help, she escaped and went into hiding. When he, in turn, was kidnapped and murdered, the Orm left evidence even the Japanese police couldn't overlook. In March, they finally decided to raid Kamikuishiki. But three days before, Asahara received a tip-off and ordered a preemptive strike. Parcels of liquid sarin, wrapped together with a solvent that turns it into gas, are distributed to a dozen Orm commandos. Next morning, they board trains packed with commuters, choosing subway lines which converge on Tokyo's central government district. Just after eight o'clock, the bundles are placed in the carriages, and the deadly cocktail mixed at the point of an umbrella. With that inhuman act, Japan was plunged into a state of insecurity not experienced for decades. With its belated spectacle of police power, a ghastly revenge murder caught in the glare of national television. An attempted assassination of the country's police chief, 
and more gas attacks, including one near disaster involving a cyanide parcel planted inside this major station. Shoko Asahara is now under arrest, saying very little. Some of his lieutenants, though, are proving more cooperative, and the story we have is based on their reported confessions. Japan is no longer the same. Sarin, a weapon too horrible even for nations at war, has been used by Japanese against fellow Japanese. The close feeling of identification which holds this complex society together, that human chemistry, has gone terribly awry. <laughs>